We want to welcome to Veterans Radio today, Lieutenant Dustin Picard of the NOAA Corps. This is the first time I think Veterans Radio has ever had the chance to interview somebody from the NOAA Corps. So Dustin, uh, Lieutenant, we're glad to have you. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. And I just want to thank you for inviting uh, the NOAA Corps. I'm uh, honored to be here and to to talk to you and and to your listeners. And I want to thank our veterans, too. Uh, You guys have paved the road for us and and I wouldn't be here in this seat if it, if it wasn't for all of our veterans. So, so thank you to you, sir, and thank you to our veterans listening. Well, I want to tell a few folks, we have a lot of Army guys listening, and they're going, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, what the hell does that mean? Well, sure. the, the Corps has the same uh, rank as the Navy. That is correct, yep. So we have the same same ranks as, the, as pretty much all the seagoing services, as the Navy and the Coast Guard. So a lieutenant is a railroad track uh, officer for those Army guys who uh, understand that, uh, that, oh, that's a captain in my language, or the mm-hmm. uh, Air Force guys. So we just kind of wanted to set up Lieutenant Picard um, a little bit about, because people aren't familiar with the NOAA Corps. So why don't you start by telling us what the NOAA Corps is all about? Yeah, uh, great question to start us off, and it's a it's a very loaded question, so I'll, I'll do my best to, to steer us straight here. So the NOAA Corps is a uniform service. Uh, we are one of eight services now in the country. So you have your six armed services, and, and most people know the five, the six being the new Space Force, and then you have two uniform services, one being the U.S. Public Health Service, and then, of course, the NOAA Commission Corps being the eighth service there. Uh, we're extremely small. Um, we are currently about 335 officers strong, no enlisted corps, uh, but we have a uh, mandate to grow up to 500 now, and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk to that here shortly. But um, we, we kind of are at the intersection of science and service. So unlike the other services, our missions are completely environmentally and science-based, and, and that's where all of our funding comes from. In fact, we fall under NOAA, which is the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, uh, and that falls under the Department of Commerce. So unlike our, our uh, other services, we are not a part of DOD. We're actually part of DOC. Um, and so all of our missions and all of our funding comes, comes from there. And, and uh, that, that's kind of where, where we find ourselves. Uh, I mentioned we are environmentally and, and uh, science at the intersection of environmental and, and, and science and, and service. So uh, we do have two distinct um, career paths in the core, uh, the maritime side of the house as, as well as the aviation side of the house. So uh, I'd say it's about a 70-30 split. 70% of us are, are mariners and maritime based and, and ship driving, small boat, diving, those kind of disciplines. Where the other 30% are, are aviators, so pilots or navigators um, flying, flying our aircraft. And I think some folks would uh, remember the uh, public health service as a uniform service because they see in this time of COVID, they've seen the, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the Surgeon General who heads up the United States Public Health Service on TV a lot. Um, one doesn't see the head of the NOAA Corps on TV. Uh, it's a, an uh, admiral position, as I understand it. That is correct. And uh, but n- the NOAA Corps has a, a long history. It's not something new just because you just heard about it. Tell us a little bit about the uh, history of the NOAA Corps. Yeah, it's a really rich history. So I'll try to be pretty brief and succinct with it. Uh, we can actually trace our lineage lineage back to the early 1800s, 1807, in fact. And we started off as the uh, the Coast Survey and. At the time, we were mandated to, to serve the coastlines and all the navigable waters of, of what was then the United States, and, or you know, much smaller than it is now, but the coastline that we had. And we worked hand in hand with the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy to get our job done. Um, fast forward to the Civil War, and I should say that the Coast Survey, we were, we were civilian federal employees. We were not recognized as a, as a uniformed service at this time. Um, fast forward to the Civil War, uh, we were kind of thrust right into it, just like a lot of, a lot of individuals were during that time. And we mostly served on the union side of things um, as mappers, cartographers, and in all theaters of the war, of the war as well. Um, so we kind of started to, to really make a name for ourselves and assimilate into the services at that point, um, wearing uniforms with, with the other union um, service members as well. Uh, fast forward to, um, you know, after the Civil War and what we call the pre-World War I years, uh, we started to get more and more funding, and um, as the U.S. was growing and so was our territories, we, we started to get more missions, um, you know, kind of uh, remote. Uh, so we, we were deployed out to Alaska, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, Guam, you know, Hawaii, just kind of making a name for ourselves and, and charting and mapping these new areas that were coming online. 
In World War II, um, we were uh, a service was created and we kind of transformed into the Coast and Geodetic Survey. Um, and we were simulated um, into all the services. Um, so from the Navy, the Marine Corps, our officers served in, in one or, or more of these, these serv- um, branches, I should say, uh, during, during the time of the war. Uh, we served as artillery uh, officers, mine lane officers, troop transport navigators, intelligence officers. We pretty much brought our skill set to these services and served wherever they needed us. Following World War I, um, we reverted back to our role, you know, kind of peaceful surveyors, chart makers of the nation, focusing more on navigable waterways and commerce and that kind of stuff. Uh, and we spent a year practicing and, and refining this skill set. Uh, our missions kind of started to increase a little bit to land surveying uh, and started taking a look more at our, our airways charting and, and, and um, coastal mapping as well as oceanography. So we started to expand some of our disciplines and, and not so much just on on bathymetric surveys and nautical charting, but but kind of growing into into the mold that we are now. Like what you heard? Listen to this full episode and more on the Apple Podcasts app, Blog Talk Radio, Google Podcasts, or iHeartRadio. And now streaming on Amazon Music, Audible, and Spotify.